of conference on, uh, uh, under Drone Gun Parry. Uh, now we will have a, a talk about Groovy on Android, uh, thanks to Guillaume, and uh, enjoy. Thank you very much. Uh, so I know some of you guys only speak English, so I'll uh, do it in English, although initially in the, in the agenda it was written in, in, in French, uh, but uh, I hope you won't mind and you still have time to escape otherwise. So we'll speak about Groovy on Android. I'm Guillaume Laforge, I'm the project lead of the Groovy programming language project. And I work for Pivotal, Pivotal, that's uh, the company behind uh, Groovy, Spring, Redis, RabbitMQ, and all that kind of stuff. And if you want to follow me or ask questions afterwards, uh, don't hesitate to ping me at, uh, on Twitter at, uh, at GLaForge. And I'll put the slides right after the presentation on speakerdeck.com slash GLaForge, okay? So first of all, a small disclaimer, I'm a total Android newbie. So my level in Android is slightly above Hello World, but not that much, okay? So bear with me uh, and don't hesitate to uh, tell me if I say stupid things uh, about Android development. I'll be happy to learn from you, the experts. Um, the little feeling I have when I, uh, my, my small experience of Android development um, is that the, um, I have the feeling that when you work with Java uh, on Android, it's a bit like the Stone Age because it's not the you know very latest Java with lambdas, with, with streams, and all the cool APIs in Java 8. And um, I, I've got the feeling that um, if we had another language, <laughs> obviously, uh, perhaps we could do something about that. And uh, of course, my answer is that we could be using Groovy to kill some more boilerplate. The, the previous presentation is, was about already uh, how to kill boilerplate code, and I'm going to show you also how to make your code more concise uh, in a similar fashion, but in also in other ways uh, with some more syntax sugar and that kind of things that the Groovy programming language can provide. Um, and some other guys, um, think that Groovy uh, on Android uh, makes sense, and that's the guys from the New York Times. Uh, so you can go to that link to uh, see the article they've, they've just published uh, in August, uh, which is about uh, their new Android application, uh, which, will be, which will be built with Groovy and uh, Rx Java to make it more reactive and uh, more concise, etc. And they are actually even hiring, uh, so I think it's probably a job um, in New York, but uh, you might be interested uh, if you want to relocate. And they gave a few examples of the kind of stuff you'd write in Java without uh, Lambda. Uh, um, so you'd have, let's say, uh, an anonymous in a class just to return some content, and uh, you want to execute that uh, asynchronously. And uh, in, the, in the article, they compare with the, the, the Groovy approach, which is uh, just to pass a closure, uh, the curly braces, that's really just a closure. Oops, uh, I hit the wrong button. And uh, with closures, you can get rid of many anonymous you know, classes that you use uh, in many, many places uh, when you develop Android applications. And uh, furthermore, they say that, uh, so it's not me who said that, that's the guys from the New York Times. So, um, well, uh, I'm, I'm not lying, they say it. So it makes uh, the, the code when written in Groovy is more concise, more readable, and we also have some special annotations uh, to make the code type safe, like Java C and even beyond, uh, as well as as fast as what uh, Java C generates uh, with the at compile static uh, annotation. Because otherwise, Groovy is a dynamic language using reflections. When you use very dynamic features, Reflection on Android, that's usually a bit slow. So you can compile stuff statically uh, to avoid the cost of the slow um, reflection on the Android platform. So let's start with a, a brief overview of Groovy. Um, and I guess lots of you already know a little bit of Groovy through Gradle. Who's now using Gradle uh, instead of, uh, let's say, Maven, etc. So, okay, al almost half of you. So you'll more and more uh, be uh, in front of Groovy code, at least for your build. So Groovy is an open source project, Apache 2. Uh, there's uh, 
our new upcoming website there uh, with some uh, work in progress documentation. So Apache 2, you can use it as you like uh, in your project, no worries. It's an alternative language in the sense that uh, instead of using Java, you can run all the languages on the Java platform. And as long as you generate bytecode, uh, you can transform that into DEX files and APK, etc. And it's a pretty successful project with uh, just last year, we had uh, 3 million downloads. So it's a, an upward trend uh, still going uh, forward and up. And uh, one of the big aspects of Groovy is that it's very close to Java code in the sense that even the, the, the grammar of the Groovy language is actually deriving from the Java syntax itself. So that's why most uh, Java code is actually also valid Groovy code. So as you learn Groovy, you can write almost plain Java code and then progressively learn the few tricks I'm going to show you in this presentation to make your code more concise. And we always try to go beyond what Java um, proposes. It's a long wage with, let's say, many uh, facets or many faces. Uh, it's object-oriented just like uh, Java, so abstract classes, classes, interfaces, etc. That's uh, the very same thing as uh, what you have in Java. Although, again, we go a bit beyond because, for example, in Groovy uh, 2, 3, we added the notion of traits. Uh, so I'll, I'll speak about that later. Uh, it's also a dynamic language. I'm going to show you also uh, some tricks which are there because it's a dynamic language. So there are things where you might decide not to use static compilation to benefit from those things. For example, handling JSON uh, or building JSON content, etc. You might uh, benefit from uh, dynamic code, dynamic features. It's also functional thanks to closures and also all the map reduce kind of functions that are provided by the Groovy uh, SDK, the GDK, Groovy Development Kit. And as I said, it can be statically, statically type checked and uh, compiled as well. And the type, che the, the type checker, I'm, I'm not going to speak about that during the presentation, but the type checker can even be um, customized so that you can even create compilation errors for things that the Java compiler wouldn't uh, care about. So for example, let's say uh, uh, some of the uh, methods like on create or something, if you don't call on super, uh, super uh, on create or that kind of stuff, you could create a rule for the static type checker to enforce uh, such things that you actually call the, the super method, etc. So that's the kind of enhancement we could be doing. And also, uh, you know, people tend to fear uh, new languages. So first of all, I told you that it's uh, very close to Java. And uh, also, compared to some other languages, you don't have to cross a bridge uh, be between Groovy and Java. You can really mix the two together and without transforming uh, an object in one language into another language. No, that's really the very same classes, the, the very same instances that you are manipulating. So let's get started with a simple Hello World. Um, so I'm going to use Android Studio. I'm going to use Android Studio also because there's Gradle and it's uh, uh, using Groovy. Uh, so for you know the interest of time, uh, I'm just showing the slides, but uh, you can trust me that uh, I'm able to develop Hello World. So you just create a new project, uh, fill in the project details like uh, package name, etc. So that's really the, the standard wizard. Choose your target platform, create a blank activity, uh, give some details for uh, your activity. And then uh, you can have fun. But if you want to use uh, the Groovy support, you'll have to do something else. So this is the, uh, the standard uh, build file uh, generated by, by Android Studio. So there's uh, nothing special here, right? But I'm going to modify it so that you can add Groovy support, so that, so that you can add Groovy as a language uh, in your project. And when I say uh, adding Groovy, it's in the sense I, I'm not going to replace Java. We're going to be able to use both Groovy and Java together. So that's what we are going to do. So you might have certain classes in Java, certain classes in Groovy, there's no uh, problem and uh, it's anchorage. So we're not trying to say, okay, Groovy is better than Java, ditch uh, completely, you know, scratch uh, uh, Java. No, 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 you can use both together. So with that uh, standard 
a build, a default build, let's say. Uh, what you have to do, first of all, is define um, some configuration for the build script because we're going to need uh, the, this, um, uh, the, the Gradle plugin for uh, the, um, the Groovy uh, support. So you, you need to add that on the class path of the build file. Then you can apply the, the Groovy Android plugin. So by the way, uh, Champo, that's the name of Cédric Champo, my colleague, who's the guy who wrote the, uh, the Groovy support for uh, Android. So kudos to uh, my colleague because uh, he's much better than me, but unfortunately couldn't come. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, the pale uh, replacement uh, for him. And uh, then here in the dependencies for your project, you have to say, okay, I want to add uh, Groovy 2.4 uh, and with a special classifier because that's a, um, a jar which is a, a specific for uh, the Android support. And uh, so you put that there and then uh, you are able to use Groovy in your project. So if you go with the, uh, the Hello World example that the uh, Android Studio uh, with art uh, created, the, you, you just have to, let's say, rename the main activity from Java to Groovy, and then you can remove certain things. And I'm going to uh, uh, show uh, so some example of that. And then your, your application is, ne is then already groovier, right? So more concretely, uh, my uh, main activity might look like that. Uh, for ex instance, you can drop some parents, you can drop the um, semicolons, you can remove the return keywords, etc. So that's just small little details. Also, instead of doing dot equals, blah, 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 and null checks, you can use equal, equal, and that's uh, doing the right thing um, appropriately. And then, hope you've got the, the Hello World uh, application in green. And uh, for those who uh, um, want to talk to me afterwards, I, I've got a small demo yesterday. I was building uh, another application, uh, more complex at least than uh, Hello World, uh, which is a small application for um, helping my daughter, she's, she's six year old, uh, to learn how to read. And I'm developing that small application which shows you know, words and she tries to read them, etc. Uh, and I'm developing that small application um, in Groovy for Android. And a question that you might ask uh, is about, you know, it, where, as soon as you add a new dependency to your project, because you're going to have to add the, the Groovy uh, jar, basically, uh, in your project. So this is uh, some uh, numbers that are uh, from a conference agenda application. I'm going to give you the link afterwards, uh, which is a more complex uh, application. Uh, if you just look at the size of the Groovy jar, it's already uh, four and a half uh, megabytes uh, big. Uh, but the generated APK is just two megabytes. And after ProGuard uh, did its job, and uh, with just simple rules uh, just to allow Groovy to run properly on Android, without really trying to trim Groovy down further, the, uh, the, the, the final jar is just one megabyte uh, big, so it's not very big. And also something to be aware of is also the number of methods which uh, come from the Groovy uh, jar. It's 8K, uh, 8,000 methods. So, uh, you know, you have a 64K methods allowed unless you use multi-dex kind of tricks. So, I mean, compared to, let's say, if you use the, uh, what's the name of the library? The, the Google Play service library, which brings uh, 20K methods just if you want to use uh, Google Plus signing or things like that. Or uh, I know there are big libraries which bring even more uh, metho methods than that. So perhaps we can tweak the pro guard rules, and I think I've got these there. So these rules are re really just uh, to, um, uh, to, to you know, allow, uh, keep the, the stuff that Groovy really needs. Uh, and remove some warnings and that kind of stuff. So it, we don't try to go further, but perhaps we can tweak that to even remove uh, more methods uh, to not add up to the total of methods that your application will, will have. Uh, next. Um, so how does the, the Groovy, a few words about how it really works before showing how Groovy can make your code more concise, more readable, etc. So 
the, the standard process for um, um, a Java-based uh, Android application. So you have the compile time part when you create your application, compile it, build it, bundle it, etc. And then you've got the runtime part where the application runs uh, on the device. So the compile time part, you compile that stuff to uh, .class files uh, through bytecode, then you g use the dex tool to dex everything and uh, put everything in APK, and then you can upload and deploy your application on the, uh, the, the device. Initially, uh, in the Groovy one seven days, uh, that was more than three years ago, we tried a little different approach which is to actually uh, somehow put the, the Groovy files in the APK directly, somehow as, as a you know, text resource, but not really pre-compile stuff. And what we were doing was that uh, uh, at runtime, we would compile, uh, because part of the Groovy SDK, uh, there's also the Groovy compiler, we would compile stuff on the device uh, and actually put that into a file on the local file system and uh, using files on the device is usually pretty, sh pretty slow. You had to jar stuff on the device, dex the stuff on the device. Then you had a, there's a specific uh, Groovy, uh, not Groovy, um, dex uh, class loader which actually loads that stuff. So I can tell you that that process was not ideal because it was very slow. But you know, once the classes are compiled, it was okay and it was uh, pretty fast. Uh, but still, uh, that's not very efficient because uh, you've got it, it adds like one or two seconds uh, before being able to run your stuff. So if you want to have, you know, an, an application which is reactive that users enjoy, you don't want to add, let's say, two seconds for the startup of your application just because you want to use Groovy. That would be stupid. So the, the new, and that's uh, the, the some other languages which work on uh, Android, like Ruby. There's a project called Ruboto which uses that approach. So unfortunately, it's a bit slow and inefficient. So instead, we managed to do it the proper way, which is just like the, the Java way. So we pre-compile stuff, uh, all the classes in class files, index, APK, and we upload that to the device. But that said, sometimes, you may want to evaluate uh, some Groovy code at runtime, so the, the previous process I explained uh, is still possible and you can still use that. Uh, so if you want to do, a, let's say, a Groovy console where you code some Groovy stuff and execute that on the device as a mini IDE for uh, your uh, Android device, uh, you could do that. There are interesting use cases for that. But I would usually avoid using that because of that, you know, one or two seconds uh, compilation time because it's pretty costly. Okay, so what does Groovy bring uh, on top of Java or beside Java in addition to Java? There are many things which uh, are optional. So you can use semicolons, but you can get rid of them. Uh, you can remove lots of uh, parents around. Uh, you can use uh, optional typing, so instead of repeating types all the time, you can just say def name equals uh, some string name. Uh, return keyword and public keywords are uh, as well optional because we, the, the last uh, expression which is evaluated is what is returned by default. Um, uh, methods are actually, or in classes, are actually public by default, but you can still use private, protected, etc. So more concretely, let's say you have a a Pojo uh, with a greeter class, with a uh, property, you know, an owner, with a getter and a setter, a greet message, a uh, greet method with a little message there. Then you instantiate that, uh, call the setter, and print on the, the output. Uh, if you transform that into Groovy by removing public return, uh, we also have what we call G strings, that's uh, interpolated strings. So you can, instead of doing uh, string concatenation, you, you have dollar name placeholders. We also have uh, named constructors, so it's calling the, the default constructor uh, as normally, uh, but it calls the setters afterwards. So you can, uh, and especially, I mean, even in um, uh, in the Android uh, in the Android SDK, you have uh, even things like chain setters and that kind of stuff. But you can very easily uh, instantiate in one line um, and passing the, the the properties in the name con constructor that can make the code uh, uh, slightly nicer. So 
uh, you know, with uh, 10, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 lines become 2, 4, 6 lines of Groovy code. Because this, for instance, that's a Groovy property. So the Groovy compiler generates the getter and the setter for you. You don't have to implement them. Uh, it's generated uh, by, by the Groovy compiler. So it can make the code slightly more concise and more readable. We also have additional operators, some more uh, syntax sugar. For instance, here, uh, so this is not an operator, it's a, it's a kind of shortcut. We've, we've got what we call groovy truth. Um, so everything that's not null, uh, not empty, uh, not zero sized, uh, or not equal to zero somehow, can be uh, coerced to the value of true. And otherwise, everything that's uh, um, null, etc., is uh, zero. So instead of doing uh, let's say you've got a string, a uh, string dif different from null, and the length is longer than zero. Uh, you can shorten that to if s. So it's not an operator, but I'm going to use that uh, logic uh, for, for, for the next stuff, the next line, which is here. We've, we've got the Elvis operator. That's that operator here. So it's like the, the ternary operator, but kind of a shortcut because we don't repeat the stuff which is in the middle. So, uh, and you know why it's called the Elvis operator, by, by the way? So if you <laughs> put your uh, head like that, you're going to see uh, the, the Elvis smiley, right? With the banana hair, etc. So what, what, what this code is doing is that uh, if person name, and actually we reuse the Groovy truth, if the, the name is not null and the length is longer than zero, then that's what we're going to return. Otherwise, we return a default value. So that's a nice shortcut for this part, plus uh, avoiding repeating person.name there uh, in the ternary uh, variant. Another thing uh, we added, that's the, um, the uh, safe navigation operator. So instead of doing, let's say you've got an order, an order has got line items, and in a line item there's an item, and an item can have a name. Um, but uh, you want to retrieve the name and the thing is, you know, the order may be null, the line item may be null, item might be null, so you have to do if order is different from null, then uh, if the line item is not null, etc. You've got nested ifs, uh, which can be a bit ugly. So instead, what we do is that we do that logic for you, and if anything in the chain is null, it's going to return null. Okay, so you can even mix that into the, the Elvis operator, etc. And this, uh, it's a feature which is actually copied uh, by uh, Swift on iOS, C Sharp by Microsoft, and the first one to borrow that feature, that was uh, actually CoffeeScript, the safe navigation. So it's nice also to see that all the languages are borrowing features that the, the Groovy developers invented. And another little remark is that, uh, so anything null in the chain, uh, it's going to return uh, null there. But the, the, the logic about uh, null safe handling is that for, for something like person.name, uh, here we don't use this uh, safe navigation operator. But here, what happens if person is null? It's going to throw a null pointer exception. But in, in Java, null pointer exception is just going to say null pointer exception. It's not going to tell you what was null or what property was called. With Groovy, the error that you get is null pointer exception, but with a message which says cannot get property name on null object. So you know that's person that was null because we called the name property on uh, person. So it's a nice little improvement. Uh, I mean, in terms of code or anything, it doesn't bring anything, but uh, when you get a null pointer exception, at least you really know where the, the null pointer is coming from. But a small disclaimer is that I've heard that um, with uh, ART, the new runtime, they are uh, improving the null pointer uh, exception messages, so you should be able to get uh, that kind of feedback like what Groovy provides uh, Well, when you uh, can use ART uh, on new devices and later versions of Android. So, uh, at least it's nice. We've got some more syntax sugar, like uh, notation for lists, for maps with key column values. We also have a notation for regular expressions. You can create ranges. You can also create ranges of your own uh, objects. So it's not just ranges of numbers. And we have closures 
which is just a, a block of code delimit, uh, surrounded by curly, uh, curly braces, and you can pass parameters. Here, the, the parameters are not uh, typed, but you can, of course, type them. And uh, one of the nice features, uh, thanks to Groovy closures, and the fact that Groovy is a dynamic language. So this feature is a dynamic feature. So for that one, the one I'm going to show you afterwards, what we call builders, um, it's, so it's not fluent APIs kind of builders, it's a, it's a different concept. Uh, for those builders, it's a dynamic feature, so uh, that part of your code which doesn't use, which use builders, uh, shouldn't be com uh, stati uh, statically compiled. So just a, a small uh, be aware uh, message. And here's an example of how you can create JSON content. The, the thing with what we call Groovy Builders, that's how you can uh, nest method calls taking closures as parameters. So if you see there's a person method call which takes a closure, a block of code there, and you also have an address method which actually takes another uh, closure. And you see that, uh, okay, person, it's got name, age, daughters, and this new object address has got street, zip, city uh, underneath. So it's going to generate that kind of uh, JSON content. So you see the level of nesting uh, by just following the opening and closing uh, curly braces. So this is generating JSON in a very concise way. And it's not just declarative because you can also use a for loop inside uh, to iterate over uh, you know, the values of something, etc. So it's, it's very, uh, very powerful because it's both declarative and imperative in the sense that you can add and uh, you know, filter things or transform things, uh, iterate over collections, etc., to create uh, the output. So we also have that same support for XML, and I'm going to show you uh, at the end that we could also apply that for uh, creating views and layouts. Uh, so we produce JSON content, but you can also consume JSON content. So if you go, uh, if you use the, the REST API uh, from uh, GitHub, because the project is on GitHub, uh, we've got a special uh, parser, the JSON slurper, uh, which parses text. And what's interesting, so here, the, this two URL method transform that string into a java.net URL. And then you've got dot text. It's a shortcut for get text, to which you can also pass uh, an encoding if you really want. But dot text is actually doing an HTTP get in just a one-liner. You, know? you just do dot text, and it's going to call uh, to do an HTTP get to get the remote JSON content. And the other thing which is powerful is that actually you don't have to marshal uh, and create a kind of schema with a proper object graph representing commits, authors, names, etc. Uh, because it's a dynamic aspect, uh, Groovy is able to find out that, okay, you search a commit uh, object inside that JSON document. Inside that commit object, you're looking for the author object, uh, JavaScript object, and then the name property on that object. So you don't have any marshalling, any additional classes to create and add uh, to mimic the, the, the JSON uh, schema. And you just uh, go right away, but with a kind of, it's a bit like a, you know, G-path, uh, X-path expression or something like that. Um, it's as if you already had the, that object graph available. So in uh, four lines of code, you can do something very powerful without generating more overhead, more classes, etc. A few words about annotations. So Groovy has uh, annotations, but why I'm speaking about annotations is because it's also uh, things uh, like a um, APT, which is used by various frameworks on the uh, Android platform. In Groovy, it's actually not an APT, but it's a slightly different mechanism. Uh, which we call AST transformations, which transform the code thanks to, uh, well, triggered by an annotation. So you annotate something, and then there's going to be a code transformation happening at compile time, not at runtime, uh, which will uh, take care of modifying the code. And it's not APT, right? So APT is a Java tool, and it's, uh, you know, it understands Java code, but it doesn't understand all the languages. So we cannot really reuse APT, but we have different mechanisms with code transformations, AST transformations in Groovy to do the same thing. So I'm going just to mention a few of those transformations. It's only a short list, but the ones which might be more in, the more interesting. So you have things like 
toString to have a nice toString method or sortable to uh, make your pojos uh, comparable, etc., and sortable. You can create a fluent builder APIs with add builder, etc. So there are things like delegation patterns, immutability, and I'm actually going to show you an example with that immutability. If you want to create a pojo which is immutable, by the book, I would say, uh, if you look at effective Java, there are many things to do, create a final class, tuple constructors, private fields, create a proper equals and hash code method, etc. That's a lot of code to do that. If you do that in Java, just for a person class with a string name and int age property, right? So it's just class name age, that's all. Um, I mean, it's so small that you cannot really read that. Perhaps the first row can read something. But if you really want to follow that pattern and implement that properly in Java, this is Java code, uh, it's pretty verbose and you know error prone because you might be making a mistake in your equals or hash code method or, or something. This example of immutable object there, uh, I mean, it's also valid Groovy code, so you could very well write that in Groovy, but Groovy has got something else, which is the at immutable annotation and transformation. And instead of writing that very long class, you just say at immutable person, string name, int age. That's all you have to do. Your class will be immutable, right? Like uh, suggested by you know the book um, from uh, Josh Blosh. So we have several such transformations, and you can also write your own, of course, uh, which do some very handy stuff and which allows you to focus more on, you know, I, I want that class to be immutable. I don't want to bother with uh, implementing immutability myself. So AST transformations are pretty neat because they allow you to be lazy. That's going to be the, the groovy compiler that's going to do the, 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 the job for you to implement those patterns, etc those code generation bits. Uh, ultimately, the code is more concise and uh, more readable as well because there's less to read. And, and as a uh, consequence, I would say that it's easier to uh, maintain and there's less stuff to worry about. We also have traits. So it's a bit um, like interfaces, but with method bodies. And our traits are also stateful. So I created a, a small example. Uh, no, it's um, an example from uh, uh, a demo that my colleague, colleague uh, Cédric Champo did. So uh, there's a project on, uh, on GitHub, Melix uh, slash speaker time, which uses a trait. So it often uh, you want, um, you, you, I mean, in, in Android, you have activity, you always have to extend activity. If you want to add some base behavior, you have to create your own base activity class of some sort. Or if you use RoboJuice, you also had, uh, you know, ex extends RoboActivity and that kind of, of stuff. But sometimes there are orthogonal uh, things, concepts, uh, bits of code that you want to inject in all your classes without really relying on the fact that you need to extend some common base class. So, for instance, if you want to use the, uh, the Google API client stuff that you want to inject in an activity or in some other place, you could define that in a trait, and although this class is extending the uh, activity, you can get the implementation of those methods from the trait weaved in, mixed in, uh, inside your code. So you can access create Google API because it's coming from the, the trait which is here. So it's very handy to uh, refactor common behavior that you want to reuse here and there. Uh, some more comparison be between uh, Java and Groovy, uh, for instance, uh, I took some examples from uh, the Android in Action book. Uh, th this, was, th this one is quite nice. When you, when you do uh, listeners, you, will you often have to create uh, you know, uh, anonymous in our classes, but uh, with Groovy you can just say, okay, on click listener equals the closure, and the closure is going to be uh, you know, creating somehow uh, uh, a listener that will be set. Uh, we coerce the closure into a listener that will be set on the, the burden. So it's uh, quite neat. Uh, some shortcuts like uh, the properties, you can say dot action instead of get action. Uh, if the action is no or not, you can do uh, double equals. Uh, it's going to call the equals and check that what's on the left is not null to avoid an NP. 
Uh, things like uh, when you want to do stuff on another thread, again, you need an anonymous inner class uh, implementing th the thread run method. In Groovy, there's a little shortcut called thread.start, so a new static method which Groovy uh, decorates, decorates, it decorates the, the thread class. So you just pass the body of the run method inside the, the body of the closure here. Uh, we have a with method for instead of Instead of calling set text, set blah, 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 uh, repeating view dot, etc., all the time, you can just do with and do assignments like that, text, text size equal. So it's slightly more readable, although it's uh, one more line compared to uh, that example in Java, but it's uh, still more readable. Uh, what this one is doing, yeah. Um, uh, you can, um, you know, again, the property shortcut, the groovy truth here uh, to avoid this complex uh, check and the g-string here uh, instead of doing uh, string concatenation so again a small daily details another example from the book that was for when you read content from a file on uh, an sd card or something like that uh, and actually the, the code is a bit smelly because it's using available which is i'm not sure it's correct to do that uh, groovy thanks to closures a new method added by the groovy uh, SDK uh, can shorten that to take care of resource handling. So instead of having to, you know, take care of, okay, is the input stream still there if it's not closed, uh, not, you know, coach exceptions, etc. We kind of wrap that logic uh, within the with input stream method, and it's the, all that, you know, resource handling stuff and exception handling stuff is handled by the with input stream method. So as soon as the closure here uh, is over, it's going to close everything properly. But we also have shortcuts for like the F text uh, method that I mentioned before for um, the JSON uh, support. Uh, instead of all that long stuff, and instead of dealing with the import stream and reading fr from the input stream to read the text content, there's a F text. There's also F bytes if you want to get the bytes if it's not a text file. And instead of, you know, 10 or 12 or uh, I don't know how many lines, you can write that more nicely and concisely in three lines of Groovy code. What else? So beyond Groovy, uh, there are some uh, initial work on some new projects, like uh, Swiss Knife, again, projects available on uh, GitHub. So it, it's a bit like Burden Knife and Android annotations, but for uh, Groovy. So you've got the same kind of stuff, uh, like, uh, you know, injecting uh, views, uh, say there's on background and on UI thread, I think, annotations to say, okay, I really want to do uh, that uh, on a different thread, on the right thread. And you have to uh, call at some point the uh, injection to uh, take place. So yeah, on UI thread, on background, on the various events. And uh, it's built as AST transformation. So instead of APT, uh, since it's in the groovy world, it's an AST transformation, a code transformation. And you just need to add that uh, dependency in your project. Um, in a, so this is more experimental, it's not available on Maven Central, but you, you'll get the idea. When you want to actually build dynamic views, uh, not driven by XML, uh, let's say you have to create a relati relative layout, a text view, add the text view to the layout, etc., and call the, the various. So it's already a bit shorter because uh, I use the, the property notation instead of the getters, but still, uh, that might be uh, hard to follow. What is a child of what? Um, it's quite imperative, but instead, if you use the, the builder, the groovy builder approach, you can make things uh, hierarchical uh, because you see that the text view is below the relative layout and you can pass the attributes uh, as parameters of those uh, pseudo method calls. And also notice that in groovy, you can do that kind of thing it's like twen, uh, 20 dot uh, dip uh, and define, add properties to numbers. So if you want to handle, uh, uh, you know, dimensions, uh, different kind of dimension uh, units, you can do that uh, thanks to Groovy uh, um, shortcuts for adding properties to numbers. So if you want more, um, there are, so again, I published the presentation on speakerdeadcom slash gilaforge. Uh, there are some getting started articles here. Uh, you can find the Gradle plugin support here. Uh, the conference agenda application I mentioned can also be found there, uh, Grid uh, Dash Dap. So it's a, a fully Groovy uh, application. 
And it's available, uh, I forgot to mention, but it's uh, available on the uh, App Store, so if you want to, to run it. There are still some bugs, but it's available in the App Store, in the, uh, the Play Store, sorry, App Store. Oh, shame on me. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been uh, using Android device for, for, for years and years, and I've never owned an iOS device. And there's also an, uh, a neat uh, demo uh, which mixes uh, Groovy, uh, uh, well, both are in Groovy, of course, an Android application and a Google Wear application. Again, another sample project if you want to have a look at. And in summary, I'm rushing, but I'm, I'm going to get on time. So I hope by the, uh, through this presentation, I managed to show you that we can make Groovy more concise, uh, not make Groovy, but make Gro um, Android development more concise and readable and more maintainable by using Groovy without, comprom with, oh, sorry. Ah. without compromising type safety and uh, speed. And I really welcome your feedback because I'm not an expert in Android, but I know there are many areas where Android can be slightly painful uh, to use because it's verbose, because you know, you've got many libraries uh, which try to fill the gaps and uh, make things easier to use on Android. But I'm sure there are things that Groovy could do to help you uh, be more productive. Uh, so I hope that I mean, don't hesitate uh, to come to me and suggest things. Oh, this thing is, is painful to do with Android. Uh, could Groovy help me? Uh, and I'll, I'll try to propose a talk uh, at the bar camp uh, to discuss, I mean, all the things that are painful in Android. Uh, so if you want to, to join that one, I'll, I'll try to, to propose that uh, bar camp uh, later this afternoon. Thanks a lot for your attention, and I'm not sure we have time for questions. Uh, we have no time, but we'll take some questions, but uh, okay. just the first ones. Okay, thank you. So, first question. Yep, Marcy. Uh, how hard it is to add your own annotation to ASD transformations? So, you can, so how hard it is to add um, a new annotation. So, the annotation itself is not uh, hard to do, it's just uh, defining a, an annotation, but of course it's the implementation which is uh, uh, less trivial. So the thing is that you have to know enough of the, um, the groovy AST, uh, which represents the, the, the program in memory, like a class node, a method node, a method body, etc. Uh, so you have to know a little bit about uh, how groovy is being compiled, how it's structured in memory before it's compiled to bytecode. So it's, I, I can't say it's trivial, uh, it's uh, definitely a bit of work, but we also have some tools, like the, we've got the Groovy console, uh, which is a small, it's not an ID, but it's a small uh, swing console kind of uh, stuff, which shows you the structure of uh, the AST of a certain Groovy program, uh, so you can really replicate what you see in the console, and you're, you can replicate that in your code if you want to create the transformation. So we have some, things and tricks uh, to simplify that work. But it's yet uh, non-trivial. It is do it's doable, but uh, that means you need to know a bit of uh, the, how the, the internal Groovy APIs. Yeah. Another question? Yes? Yes, Guillaume, thank you for your presentations. Thank you. I'd like to know if the IDEs are ready for Groovy and on, on Android, because yeah. you just told the project is revenue. Mm -hmm. So, is code completion uh, available for everything? Right. So, uh, if you use Android Studio, uh, there's actually the, the Groovy support is already built in Android Studio. So, I didn't show Android Studio, but I can do code completion and all that kind of stuff and debugging and whatever. Um, it, it just works as, as expected in, in Java, I would say. So, and I know that uh, the Android Studio doesn't bundle the very latest Groovy plugin from IntelliJ IDEA. So, for example, if you use traits, like I explained very briefly, traits are not supported by Android Studio. So, you, you'll see red lines around, but the next version of Android Studio will suddenly fix that. And still, although you see red lines in the IDE, uh, it, it still works when you compile the project and build it with Gradle, uh, because it, it, it you know, just works, yeah. So, uh, except that aspect, let's say traits, otherwise it just works like a Java. Uh, in terms of ID support, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.